Hello, everybody. Welcome to this press conference. I'm your moderator, Chelsea Nash. Uh, this is a press conference hosted by Senator Pierre Hugh Boisvenu and Member of Parliament Gerald Soroka, Soroka sorry, for a press conference for the introduction of a bill aimed at amending the Criminal Code and the Sex Offender Information Registration Act. And they are joined by guests today, Cody McConnell and Verna Sand. And with that, I'll pass it over to the speakers and we'll have a Q&A after. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think we've already done the introduction of the bill, but it is uh, bill number 336. Uh, and the short version for us is gonna be Noah's Law. And as uh, I introduced the bill yesterday in the House, a lot of things went through my mind with the emotion of how such a tragedy like this should never have happened. I started thinking about a commercial, believe it or not, about a couple of years ago of how many people die on, a, on highways every year. It's around 460 some that we're talking and they had a, a person that was in the room and he says, what's an acceptable number of people to die on these highways? And he said, geez, I don't know, maybe 250. That's probably high, but maybe 125. So they marched 125 people of his family members, his wife, children, his brothers, sisters, their children. And he said, what's an acceptable limit of people to die now? And he realized he just wiped out his entire family. And he said, well, zero. And I think that's one of the things that we need to start looking as parliamentarians is how can we bring these deaths down, these senseless murders that are occurring? It should be zero. That is the important thing as parliamentarians to be doing is to protect our society and our people. We seem to have lots of new bills or laws or even the Supreme Court of Canada challenging our laws that we currently have to protect the criminals or perpetrators. But what are we doing to protect the victims? And the point should be first, it isn't about protecting the victims. We shouldn't have any victims. If we have a civilized society, why do we continue to have all these murders still occurring? And I know a lot of people start talking about, yes, but that's a big city issue. You know, it's only in downtown Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, you name it, whatever city you want to say. But this happened in Hinton, a small town community in Alberta. And I know it wasn't the first time that I spoke with the family but it was one of the times we were talking, and, and I'm going to say, Verna, we were talking one time, and you said that when Cody called you to say he couldn't find Mikhail and Noah, that you guys left Camrose and drove there. And the whole way, you never once thought that they were going to be, you know, murdered. That was never entered, because this doesn't happen in small town rural Alberta. But unfortunately, it's happening everywhere across Canada. And we know for a fact under this government, crime has skyrocketed. And why? Because they're so laxed on how criminals can act and interact with us. And yesterday was a small step by introducing this bill, which I'm hoping parliamentarians and senators will pass quickly so we can actually stop this from happening ever again to the families. So that is how my opening remarks. Thank you. <clears throat> On September 16, 2021, my life was forever changed. On that day, my 16-month-old son shot a hockey puck for the first time. Within hours of that special moment, our neighbour, a man we did not know and had lived next door to us for just two weeks, abducted my wife, my son, then assaulted and brutally murdered them both. That day, I lost my family. Their lives were taken by a monster who was known as a high, high risk to reoffend. He had previous convictions and upon his release, the Edmonton Police Service issued a warning to the public that he was considered a danger to women and children. So how did he end up in Hinton, Alberta, living in the same complex as Cody's family? 
close to playgrounds, schools, and children. The current provisions for the tracking and management of convicted violent sexual offenders presents an illusion of safety to the public, but does not actually provide any safeguards. We are, not living, we are now sorry, living with the tragic outcome of a system which is not functioning as intended, not properly resourced, and not monitored for efficacy. Mikhail and Noah are an extreme example showing how the monitoring of convicted, violent, sexual offenders is non-existent. While in Edmonton, the Edmonton Police Service sought and obtained a recognizance to keep him reporting his location to police and keep him under court-ordered conditions. Then, the Supreme Court of Canada struck down the lifetime registration in SWARA of high-risk violent offenders, citing concern over their privacy in having to be seen attending a police station to report and lack of ability to appeal the automatic lifetime registration. This left the most dangerous sexual offenders in a legal limbo in the minds of the police. This left our family forever lost. Some prosecution services began seeking individual court applications to ensure continued registration and monitoring of location. Many offenders, like him, just fell through the cracks in this system. He moved to Hinton, where the police and the community were unaware of the danger he represented. Nobody monitored his location, and he had no reporting requirements. The public is left with the illusion of protecting and monitoring, but the system is broken. When SWARA was created, the preamble of the Act did not even include the goal of protection of public. The existing sex offender registry was stated to be for the use of police investigations, but with no requirements to maintain registration, no punishment if registration and location were not updated. The police rarely use this registry for investigation purposes, and the registry is not acting as a layer of protection to the most vulnerable, infants, children, and adults who are at risk. In all of British Columbia, we are advised that two dedicated RCMP officers in a remote rural detachment are responsible for the operation of SWARA. Research shows no reported case in Canada where the SWARA registry was used to apprehend criminal sex offenders. In the names of Mikhail and Noah, in their memory and for the thousands of other child and vulnerable sexual assault victims of assaults by known convicted predators, we ask you to change this sad, tragic reality. We are asking for prevention, preventative measures to protect women and children. The proposed amendments to the Criminal Code and SWARA are believed to be charter compliant and a first step to providing immediate protection to the most vulnerable. We are asking for a more robust registration system, the creation of a subset within SWARA of the most dangerous repeat offenders, and the ability of a potential landlord to be told if an offender with multiple or violent offenses is seeking to rent in a family complex or location near schools and playgrounds. Police would provide very limited information, but the objective is to place public safety above privacy concerns of this subset of violent or repeat offenders. Mikhail and Noah had their voices violently silenced. We respectfully ask you to be their voices and to seek passage of the bill. As a family, we thank you for your efforts and we commit to continuing to advocate for the most vulnerable of victims as we grieve the loss of our precious family members. May their names and voices live on within Noah's law. Thank you. Aux gens qui sont avec nous aujourd'hui, je tiens d'abord à remercier mon collègue, le député Gérald Soroka, pour cette initiative et sa grande détermination 
à, à déposer le projet de loi que, hier qui le fait à la Chambre des communes et que je vais faire après midi euh, au Sénat. I would like also to express my deepest gratitude to Mr. Cody McConnell, his family, and the group of friends who welcomed me in Alberta a few weeks ago in their community. You profoundly move me by sharing with me the terrible tragedy that your family experienced. Votre courage et votre résilience face à cette terrible, innommable uh, drame nous inspire et nous rappelle pourquoi nous sommes ici aujourd'hui. Why we're here today. Je vous rappelle, I, remember, I recall you that uh, Co Mr. Cody, families, friends, uh, traveled uh, from uh, Camrose uh, in Alberta to be with us today to, uh, to present that bill in the Senate and uh, yesterday at the, uh, the, uh, the other chamber. En octobre 2021, Cody McConnell a perdu sa femme et son fils dans des circonstances les plus tragiques. Michael Bush, 24 ans, et son fils de 16 mois, Noah McDonald, a été sauvagement assassiné par un délinquant sexuel reconnu en libération, mais sans contrôle, lequel vivait dans le même immeuble qu'eux. Il s'agit d'un drame qui n'aurait jamais dû se produire. « As my oldest daughter was murdered by a repeat offender, she should be alive today. » En leur mémoire, nous présentons aujourd'hui le projet de loi intitulé « Loi de Noah »,« Noah Bill », qui sera déposé, comme je l'ai dit tantôt, dans les deux chambres. Et ce projet de loi-là propose des changements très significatifs à nos systèmes de justice et de sécurité publique dans le but de renforcer la protection des femmes et des enfants contre les délinquants sexuels dangereux. Nous proposons d'étendre, dans certains cas, la durée de l'enregistrement du délinquant sexuel à 30 ans pour garantir un suivi à long terme plus rigoureux de ces derniers. Nous exigerons également le suivi de programmes de thérapie obligatoires lorsque le délinquant sexuel demande une révocation de cette ordonnance de se conformer à la loi sur l'enregistrement des renseignements sur les délinquants sexuels. De plus, ce projet de loi augmenterait les mécanismes de contrôle une fois le délinquant remis en liberté. Le problème est right there. We don't, have, we don't have any control when those guys uh, return in the community. Nous exigerons. Il prévoit donc un plus grand nombre de visites au centre d'enregistrement. Il rendra obligatoire les modifications de changement d'adresse. Il dirigera en infraction le fait qu'un délinquant ne se présente pas à un centre d'enregistrement. Today, in memory of Noah and his mother, we are taking an important step to protect Canadians from such tragedies. This bill is a step towards a world where no families should experience a tragedy like the one the McConnell families had go through and which upset the hunter, hunter, hunter community. Merci à tous pour votre soutien, votre encouragement envers ce projet de loi. Merci à toi, Cody. Thank you, Cody, uh, de m'avoir accueilli et d'avoir partagé votre souffrance, votre profond espoir que les choses changent. Our tragedy, both of us, will make the difference. And that bill will make also a difference for the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm seeing no questions in the room, so I'm wondering if there's questions for those joining virtually. So you just have to raise your hand using the raise hand function. Seeing none, I think we can conclude this press conference, thank you. Well, I guess that concludes uh, the press conference today. If no one has any other questions, thank you very much for coming. And uh, once again, sorry to uh, Cody McConnell and your family and friends that have come here. We are trying to do our best to uh, improve this situation so once no other family has to go through what you're going through each and every day and we wish you the best.